What's up everybody, Luke here, Mr. FBA UK. We're going to bring you another awesome video. Haven't done one for a little while because I've been getting everything prepared for Q4. For myself, getting into a position where, you know, the rest has to, the rest can't come from you. Like, uh, there's a lot of sort of two ways for Q4 here. Like, you've got to obviously put yourself in a really good position in many areas so that you can optimize it more efficiently. But also, you've got to let Q4 just take you for the ride as well. Like, you can't force it. It happens itself and does its own thing. You have to sort of experience it to understand. Like, you could just pump stock in now. Like, yeah, I've got loads of stock in there. But you actually see that a lot of it was sit there. And you'd be like, come on, why isn't it selling? It's October. And, and you've got to just let it happen. Like, one, one day in October, you'll just see a click. Uh, and you'll just see, you'll just see like, someone's literally turned on a button. Uh, like a switch and Q4 is uh, like upon us and you might be asking it's the 1st of October why am I posting it today why haven't I done it earlier because Q4 is actually now but in reality yes it is but actually you don't really see any effect of Q4 until the third week of October I say so really it's only about two months of the year that you see like noticeably different sales figures than the rest of the year sort of thing um so actually you have about two i've looked i've got an october calendar in front of me which i print out printed out so i can literally write down loads of bits on each day just uh that's that's one one way i'm going to keep it all like i'm trying to put myself in the best position literally by having a calendar in front of me i'm going to be like right so on the 31st of october um you've got black friday or something you know obviously that's a wednesday but yeah what i'm trying to say <clears throat> so i know roughly okay so i want to get as much stock in you really want to get it in just as much stock as you can buy is it black friday that sort of thing cyber monday all that sort of thing that weekend i can't remember i think it must be 26th this month i think possibly the 19th i think it's probably a bit uh, i can't really remember only because i remember from last year last year my sales only really noticed a noticeably increase. I mean, talking double and um, double plus sales. Noticeably increase on about the 22nd. So if we look here on when the 22nd is, we have literally one, two, three, four weeks until that date. If we are going to go by that same date. Now, more likely or not, it's going to be slightly different because last year obviously wouldn't have been a Monday. It would have been like a Sunday or something. So I'm, I've put a, a base marker Q4 is going to kick off and I'm going to start seeing improvements in my sales on the 19th of October. So that is, well, it's three weeks. So we have this week, we have next week, and then we have up to the Friday on the week after. And that is these three weeks is if you can do the most amount of work you've done on your in, in and on your Amazon business in these three weeks, it's almost like you just work these three weeks. Obviously, you've got to work over the rest of the year, the year anyway. You've got to keep up your the stock levels. But you get yourself into position for these three weeks, and it's almost like he's paying you back months and months and months and months worth of value, as in in return for profit, by only a couple of, you know, potentially a couple of weeks of, of hard graft. When I'm talking hard graft, you don't have to. A lot of people do. I'm definitely going to be doing it. I'm going to include Sunday nights into my regime so like I, I see the girlfriend on the weekend and stuff so obviously I can't like work every second of the day um, but I've got to sort of balance it um, and I see yeah, yeah I see her on Fridays and stuff so only obviously we go out so I can't be working like every day forever um, over Q4 but I've started incorporating Sunday nights now what I've been doing on Sunday nights is I've been doing everything I was doing on Monday mornings so like starting afresh for the week um, like record seeing what's been going on for the, for the last sort of seven days or four days um, like and just think but it, but it was like I was catching up because I wanted it done as early as possible so it was like Monday I actually I wasn't getting f full visibility of what was going on till the end of Monday um, and really I want it at the beginning of Monday so I'm starting to do work on the Sunday night now uh, and it depends I actually like I have I actually have an employee as well uh, who helps to Prep. I have like a small prep center um, with some in, some customers who use me, um, and they do my prep as well. But I also over Q4 do prep. Like 
I know some people think, oh, no, I don't want to do prep. But over Q4, by doing your own prep as well, I feel that there's multiple reasons that I feel like doing your own prep. Definitely when you're a beginner, because this is actually aimed at beginners. Now, you'll see it in the title. I'll put that it's aimed at beginners. I haven't actually said it. Um, but you'll know about you'll know before you're watching this video that it is. And I'm basically going to show you, I'm going to share some tips like I'm now, some information about what I know about it, how I've gone over it. So you've got a bit more of an insight, and I'm also going to go over what I feel a beginner would need uh, for software and stuff, like the minimum. So get at least this. Uh, definitely over Q4. Over, after Q4, you can decide to like strip it back. At the, you know, to like like so you're only spending like a hundred pound a month and stuff, um, and then what? And then figure out how you want to approach next year. But over Q4, like, is better to have higher expenses because. Even though you might be thinking, oh my God, like, well, I've got to pay £300 out. I only have, like, you know, a grand, grand and a half to spend on stock. £300 is a lot. Um, I only really want to spend 100 But over Q4, that £300, yeah, okay, for the first two weeks of October, maybe not. Um, you know, you could probably, oh, I'd say hold off, but really you need it to be able to get yourself ready. So it's like, you, you, yes, you're paying up front for these services or monthly uh, and it might be 300 but once you look back at the end of the Q4 you'll, you'll see that yes you know it's little extras and little extras but they actually massively add up over time and I'm going to go into each thing I feel that you should definitely have for beginners this may be that you haven't even started and even if you haven't started and you're literally wanting to get started now like you've set up an account and you're like you've looked you know you've learned how it sort of works you know what's going on you know what you need to do but you're like, oh, am I too late? I've seen a lot of people talk about when should we send a couple of things. When should we send stock in for Q4, and when should we stop sending stock in for Q4, and shall I send in now, or is it um, like too early? Or and other people are saying, is it too late to send stock in now? Like so, like these sort of double-sided coins in these sort of responses I'm seeing. So, for example, I'm gonna send. From what, looking at last year, this is literally how I'm doing it. I literally looked at the, you can get reports on, oh yeah, you, know, you go onto your seller central, you can look at your reports and you can see sales for the month and so on. And you can see the days and you can see how many units. The last, you'll, you'll be able to see this, but the last day that I'm going to send in stock is about four, I'll send in, I think it's, let me just go, grab the calendar on my phone. Now I'm going to do this and yes, there will be stock that won't sell because just by, by, by chance, um, but because over Q4 things selling, this, the other thing, they're selling f like up to 10 times faster on some items, so if they're really, really hot toys, Christmas toys, hot, you know, like there was a Hatchimals last year, I think, uh, and like the mini NES, like Super Nintendo, certain items, they're like 10x, so they're 10 times more popular because that is the sort of go-to toy for the or, or go-to electronic that sort of thing. So they can be ten x, but I say at least five. So I say six, five to six x on toys. Um, so you know you you're sending in. Well, people are going out stock faster, which potentially means that you you're then doing more sales anyway. But you're also then doing more sales because it's six times more sales. So you instead of buying like you know for example five Furbies, I mean I was buying last year Furbies. Um, instead of, you know, you could buy 10 and you think, oh, that's quite a lot. I spent 250 quid, 300 quid, and it's only, you know, just on 10 things. But then they're selling, instead of them taking 10 days to sell, they're selling in a day and a half. You see, all of them. And that's the sort of thing that happens. And you've really got to, by setting up early in October, I'm just sort of like randomly just spewing, but that's just, I just find that the best way. I don't want to script a massive, like, uh, video. But um, if you plan for these three weeks, and you put in a lot of work over Q4, you can you can like you can do some stupid numbers. Like every 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 Q4 you're seeing all the Facebook groups, everyone posting the the sales because it's it's like almost like it isn't your sales. It's like that only happens to those like other people. That's almost how how it feels. And you just wake up and see like you know you could do. I think the best two days I had last year. To, Four and a half grand in two days sales. Yeah, I know it could be anything in profit, but as long as you're using the minimum thirty percent or you know twenty nine percent or whatever you're doing, ROI and averaging maybe um, you know you might be selling all the way up to sixty depending on what it is. 
you know, like, that's, you're making some decent money, and it, it just spirals out, it just spirals, and actually you find out that you can't get enough stocking fast enough, that's actually what happens. So by having these um, softwares and everything that I'm going to go over, you'll be able to find a very, very good broad spectrum of products um, to keep you going, because your money also comes in 10 times faster so you need to be buying 10 times faster and if you have a couple of days where you like don't really know what to buy because you don't have you know your, your methods of sourcing are quite limited then it it, do, it it does have a huge effect like you could literally lose thousands of pounds of profit for eat for little things well, literally little things like if shipments are delayed like you don't get things in quick enough you could lose five grand just over two months in profit like that could be in your bank but you were just a bit slow you know so you have a choice yeah you don't you know you might be happy making five thousand pound profit or whatever you set between five and ten but you could do six hours in the evening until one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning but you can make 15 grand like it just depends on your priorities you know for me i'd rather just go all out for three months because in my mind like knowing that i could then have like 25k 30k just for two months work in theory you know like just going all out for two months and you made 30 that like 20 to 30 grand profit and that's not including paying like my salary that's just you know that's like a christmas bonus you know 20 grand you're thinking okay i'll just do whatever because you know a lot of it's from home anyway so it's not like you have to, the feeling of it isn't like going to work as such it's like the more that you put in the more you get out of it and then you can start afresh in the new year, um, knowing that you know you can. Then you can have almost you can have January off, because January is one of the worst months for sales. So, and for me, it was like almost not worth doing from you know last year. I'm going to change the the principles behind how I do Q1 next for this year or next year, sorry. Um, but I'm going to do videos on that later on this year about how to approach Q1 because actually I find that even harder. Then approaching Q4, you know, Q4 almost does it. If you put the right things in a line, you, you it, right, eggs in the basket or whatever, um, it's going to get you to the right place. But in Q1, it's actually really difficult. Um, but I'll go over sort of tips and tricks or whatever. So back to the back to the calendar. I see if you put in the next three weeks, lots of work, you get a lot of stock in by that, that day. So I'm gonna. My aim is to get by the 19th of this month October is to have around 2,200 units in stock about it's hard to say because if you start doing a lot of sales obviously it goes down a lot faster and stuff so it's you can do you know you can you can set a name but within a couple of days it's like completely drastically lower in units that, that you have in stock because obviously things are selling so you, it's obviously going to be fluctuating over time but I'm using it as a rough basis because I, I did last year 85,000 in sales over three, three months and I had at, at on that at that point about two weeks in to October this would be about three weeks in this year I had about 1,100 units um, in toys mainly and actually I found um, you don't need to rush into buying the toys um, so like Argos had just I still got a three for two, and they had it since like last week. Uh, but you're fine. One, a lot of them are the, the fluctuations. So the prices have gone up, and then they're three for two. So they're not much different than what they would have been. Like they would have just been on sale. Like it would have been like wow, new price, like like cheap, you know, whatever. So like like a, a Furby. I don't know if they have them anymore. But it well, it might be nineteen ninety nine, and now on the three for two, it's twenty nine ninety nine. Um, so a lot of them are like that. So actually, but there are good, there are good good ones out there. But I last year at, when Argos had their three for two, but they've just had this is September, remember? So it's not like they're doing their Christmas sales, you know, getting people looking for their Christmas sales. It's actually more like a stimulant for men, getting people into the mentality that Christmas is coming because there are deals. So all year this year there has been no deals. Like it's the work, last year was actually reasonably good like there was deals as like little and often sorry not little and often now and then 
but there were deals. So you would get these cool, like, good toy deals and stuff. But this year, literally, it's almost like the whole year's been dry, and now this is the first three for two, unless I've missed the odd thing. So I just had a drink. Um, and last year, I went and spent loads on this three for two. First three for two that was out, it was like literally the same time. So about a week, about a week before Q, well, today, within the last week, I went and spent loads, and I had loads of stock, and I sent it all in. It was sitting there until at least the 19th of October to the 22nd. I think it was the 22nd, remember I said that that was the day that the sales kicked off. So for a good three weeks, all of that three for two toys that I was like getting prepared for Q4, actually just sat there and like, I didn't really make any money on it, you know? And what I found is that all the toy stores pretty much have the same toys and they rotate in their sales. So it's a three for two now. Well, now next week there might be a Tesco's three for two or uh, half price toys, you know, half buy one, get one half price, whatever, like just another toy deal. And then what you'll find is that Smith's will have something come on. And then there used to be like a bit more Tesco's Direct used to have it, but now they've obviously not got Tesco's Direct. Um, and then there'll be another toy store that does it. Like it might be Asda or Sainsbury's. I mean, they're not going to be amazing, but they're there. And then guess what happens? Argos to another three for two, like at the end of the month, because it's then getting towards November. And now that's when it's starting to put into people's minds. November, Christ, it's a month until... Well, it's less than a month uh, until Christmas. So that's November is when people, you know, that salary that everyone gets is the people are buying. Um, but this is like a, just a prepare, just to, just to start that as sort of mental, like it's Christmas deals, uh, good offers, you know, you know how it is. It's just also to do with marketing and advertising. Um, so really like I bought some stuff this three for two, but I haven't bought nearly, I would probably spent 500 pounds or 400 pounds or something. Because I know that there's going to be so many over the month, and going into the going into next month, uh, beginning of November, that you don't have to rush. So, so you know, if you're looking, oh, am I too late to the party? No, like if you do what I've said up to the nineteenth of October, and you implement what I'm trying to show you, um, then as long as you are putting in the hours or or utilizing your time most efficiently, if you can't put the hours in. You should have a great Q4. Now, obviously, just a reminder, I had about 1,100 to 1,200 units in the last Q4 at about the, about the 19th of October. And I did 85,000 in sales. I don't know what the profit was. I forgot. Decent, though. Like, I had, like, I remember I had at least over 10,000 in the bank, maybe 15,000 in the bank. Um, at one point over Christmas, because obviously you stop buying stock and then you sort of get loads of payments come in over that where the you know I mean like the bulk of the money. Um, then you've obviously you've got to start buying again for Q1, so you can't just leave you can't just leave the money to pile up forever. But you know I had like 15k at one point before I started then using it to buy for Q1 or something. Um, I don't know what profit it would have been, no idea. But you know you get what I'm trying to say. So you can you can just do great. So as a baseline, let's say 1,100. Let's divide that by 85. Don't know how that works. So you can. No, not for that. I'll try to do a calculation. <laughs> Be smart, but it doesn't work. Yeah. So if you basically have around a thousand units, you can do 75 grand in Q4. Um, yeah, you got to pay out your expenses. But as long as you're not stupid uh, and you do some of the sort of things I'm going to show you in a minute, it should really help, and you should get close. You should at least do fifty thousand. You know, you're at least making ten grand profit, five grand, like eight grand profit. You know, like this is still decent money. You know, it, for a two month period almost. Uh, and definitely, if you're not do, really doing it, anything, if you're outsourcing a lot and. Uh, you know, you're doing it as a side thing. You can you can buy Christmas. You can buy Christmas presents for every single person, that, and then take them for a freaking, you know, harvester. Oh, <laughs> you can eat. Um, get tons to get the ribs or whatever. Um, and then you can go on a nice holiday with the family or something. The other four grand, like, well, four grand on presents is a lot, but yeah, you get me. If you're a big family, I guess. 
so yeah, it's, it, and then you know you really got to utilize this time because next year really isn't like it's almost like you really got to you take the most get the most out of it because it's a long year. Yeah, it take from January you'll really see that it's like so slow for the year to actually even start. Like it feels I I actually now judge my Amazon business year to year, like a January to December because. You can have some absolutely terrible months at the beginning of the year, but absolutely amazingly ridiculous months at the end of the year. So it's not about month by month. Yeah, the momentum's good um, and stuff, but really, if you absolutely utilize Q4 and you just do okay the rest of the year, you still have a great year. Um, it's really, and so you're doing three for two and a half to three months work, you're getting like nine, over nine months worth of output. Um, you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's just get straight straight into this because I'll I'll talk for forever. So one of the softwares you're going to want is a Chrome extension. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you. Uh, oh yeah, of course I was on Amazon. Let's just type in just because I know that there'd be Disney stuff. And yes, you're not going to be able to sell everything, but just just sell what you can and just keep doing it keep doing it just, and it, you never know because your sales will be really will be good and healthy over christmas they might start engaging you automatically in in other branded toys and stuff over q4 because they see that you're actually doing you know good sales so, um so i actually have fba multi tool at the moment now i i sort of like a switch between fba multi tool and um, book, uh, not bookable VA, Bybot Pro. Uh, I like both of them. They're very similar in, in terms of like they tell you if you can sell the item. Uh, they give you a profit. It works out profit and it shows you like the European prices. Um, but they have also different, it also has different information than each other. If you know what I mean. So literally, just I would say like try them both or look into them both and decide which one's been good for you. Because like some of the more new newbie uh, people like right out there, completely fresh, like haven't started, are still confused about this, that, and the other, like don't really understand Keeper, uh, which is this, or you can see it down here, um, like really can't get their head around it, and like just want and just feel like they haven't got, they're not going to be able to learn it efficiently enough. Then I'd say look, go for Bybot Pro, and if you're looking for something a little bit more, like a little bit faster. Um, and like just a little bit easier to read or faster to read I find like uh, on FBM Opera I, I don't have to look around so much at what I'm looking for I don't need to take as much information as Bybot Pro has I don't use all the information because I just I learned so much over my two years doing Amazon that I've, it's sort of in my head so I just take some key indicators and that's how I decide I don't need as much as Bybot Pro provides, and sometimes I'm I'm looking around because there's a lot of information. So Bybot Pro is if you're looking for a lot more information to really sort of solidify your out your judgment calls, then go for that. Otherwise, if you're looking for something a little bit more like like simple, not really simple, it has great features. It's just a bit more softer. I feel like in looking for things. For, for me, I can quickly see there straight off the bat, straight off, I can see a tick, you know, visually, and I have, it's not data that I've got to read. Um, and you can just set some settings and all that, but you know, with Bybot Pro, you can go ahead in here, there's a video if you want to watch it. Um, you can see here, there's a lot of other, this is, for me, it's not as soft, it's quite, I've got to really look through this, and I, I don't really need a lot of that, or I don't feel I need it. And I don't, Use this normally because I trust my own judgment on purchasing products. So I don't use how many, I don't really use the sales estimator or this. Um, the only thing I do use is I glance the sales estimator, which obviously both of them have, which is up here. Uh, and I roughly, I just glance it as a double check, you know? How many does it say? If it, like, when it's like that, you know, how many are you going to buy? I don't know. You, you could buy 30, but it's 40. But and I just glance at that there. But yeah, so like Bybot Pro, 
you can see here, you know, this is a lot more uh, hold your hand. Um, you know, it almost here provides you like a decision on purchasing. So it literally almost gives you, like, if you have an idea, like, oh, yeah, it looks good, but watch, uh, you know, do I buy two or seven or 12 or one or do I buy zero? You can just use this information. You can read out all the different bits it has. Um, there's loads of information here. You can just go through and you, you can set all these things like prep service and, it, it, you know, for me, I, I want to be in control because I feel like I just know better than a computer. But a lot of you aren't yet at that level and are the, actually like the other way around and needing to rely on something or feel like you're not going to, you don't trust your own judgment quite yet to f on purchases. So you want something that almost tells you what to do without telling you what to do. Um, so you go ahead and check out Bybot Pro. I'll leave a link in the description for all of these different programs um, and I'm going to just briefly write down the cost of each of these things so we can literally see what this is going to cost so like I think how much is this Oops. so we oh, is there like a does it say so it has with safeguard suspension now we're going to ignore that for now because I actually am going to recommend Bybot um, Bookable VA over Christmas. I'll explain exactly why um, that you get safeguard suspension with Bookable VA for free, so you don't need it. So basically, go for this one. This is twenty four ninety five, and for FBA Multi Tool, you can see it's got a video. It does, you know, it explains it all. Um, and you can, I would just look through each one and decide what functionality you want as as priorities. Maybe I haven't compared exactly both, and to see what each other do compare to each other or that because I don't really I'm not going to compare because um, they're both great. Um, but you can just see which ones you prefer and that sort of thing. But we'll see how much this is. I might average it out. It's not going to be much different. I think this is. Nineteen ninety five or something. Nineteen ninety nine. I don't know if that's with the VAT or that whatever. Let's just say it's nineteen ninety nine. That's just in the middle. Let's say it's twenty two ninety nine for both for those. Because this is slightly cheaper and the other one's like more expensive. But yeah, so I would just go over those two and you can see what they do and that. It speeds up your judgment as well. So over Christmas, you're going to be needing to really speed, like streamline all of your everything because you need everything is running at such a faster pace. You cannot, you cannot allow anything to slow you down because, if, like I said, anything that's slowing you down is stop is losing you profit. And I know you might think, ah, oh, but you know, an extra fifth, ten minutes here, it, you, you say that, but it really does make a difference. Like I probably didn't utilize Q4 last year as much as I could. Like I, you know, I was sending like up to ten boxes out a day, but yeah, in you know, in per I was basically sending out ten boxes a day in stock. But what happens when you're doing that? You, you haven't got time to buy stuff because you're getting it out. And if you have, and that mean, and then so you're you actually are losing a lot of potential sales because you're not getting it in and out as fast as you can. Because you're not monitoring your cash flow, because your cash flow, like it looks like you have made so much money. You, say, you know, you've got thousands and thousands of pounds going in your bank, like every day, from from maybe only a couple of hundred that you were getting every day, and you've got to find that stock with that money, um, and you've really got to do it fast. Like each day that you're not, if you know, if, for example, if you're not going to purchase anything till six o'clock in the evening, well, you've just lost one day, because that item could have been shipped the, the, if you did it in the morning. That item could be shipped in the day. Now, I know this might be something that people don't want to do, but obviously I do it full time and I do some other stuff full time. I don't just get one income from Amazon. Um, but I'm going to be getting up at like 5.30 every day. Well, not the weekends, uh, of course. And I'm going to be working Sundays. So usually I will get up about 7.30 because I normally just work till I go to bed. That's literally what I do. I might have a bit of dinner with like a little bit of YouTube for half an hour. That's normally what I allow myself. Like yeah, sometimes I'm a bit more like relaxed, like I'll have a Friday afternoon off or something. 
Um, as long as there's not much going on, but in Q4, we need to, I need to find like all this extra time. So 5.30, I'm going to be getting up. And yes, it might not happen every single day because it just depends on like if I've had a massive, massive day the night before, haven't gone to bed till late, obviously I'll, I'll make sure I get enough sleep. But as long as I'm going to bed at the reasonable time, let's say half past 10, 11, I'll get up at half five. I'll have coffee and so you almost have to like plan literally your life in advance. <laughs> um, like so like you're having cough, like two coffees before six so that by six you're alert. You showered and ready by I think it's seven and then seven till nine you've got two hours. So that's literally now getting your night pad and writing everything you need to do for the day down and adding anything that you haven't done. And making sure and trying to get that like done as quickly as you can, and then you might, and then maybe you're going to do some, I don't know, go through your emails quickly. You might check FBA Wizard or something, like some scans that you've done. And this is something I'll go over in this video anyway to show you. So don't think, what is that? Uh, check your scans. So you, you go over that for half an hour, and you add things to cart. Okay, check. Then you might look at your last day's sales. So you literally just go on Amazon. Your Amazon portal, I normally go on pending orders or orders, so not all pending orders, orders, FBA, so you don't want to look at the merchant fulfilled unless you're saying by merchant fulfilled, and then you, I normally look at the products that I've sold in the last day, I'll then do a little tally and just see roughly how many, maybe I've sold five of one thing or six of one thing, I think, oh, that's quite a lot for one day, 24 hour period. I then check the quantity in my, in, in Amazon, um, and and I'll write down that basically I just do that for all the items and if it's just if I just sold the odd one I don't mind so much um, if I sold any, any high numbers or anything I'll then check the quantities I have in Amazon and maybe I'll then add those back add to cart I build up a little cart over the day almost you know or, or over the morning um, and I'll add them because you want to you want to really be on it for all for all of this you know you don't want to be let, leaving any loose gaps because you'll find it you actually need to spend more, 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 more money. So you almost got to have all these like little regimes or safeguards in place um, to capture all of the loose ends in terms of like stock. You know, if you didn't look at the last day and you just think, yeah, yeah I've got loads of that. I, got, I remember I put 10 of those. And, and then you look back and, oh, zero. When did that happen? Well, okay, you could have you could have bought some and sent another 10 in by now. Or you could have 10 sitting and going out today, but you, now you've got to order it, wait a couple of days, you know? And if you're doing this before, like the day starting almost at nine, that's say nine is a day, a working day, you know, you're almost doing all this before you're working. It's like pre-work, um, if you want to, it's the easiest way to say it. So then I would <clears throat> do that, then I would look at my bookable VA maybe. Um, but I try to do that in the day as, as the leads come in, but you know, um, you might look at bookable VA for the previous day and add those to cart and then you might, I don't know, I might then think, okay, I'll have a quick as Q4, let's see if there's any sales on the obvious websites. So I literally go to Google, I take, I type in Tesco, I type in Argos, I type in Disney, I type in, I don't know, Superdrug, I type in like whatever random, you know, whatever companies that are quite good with sales, Smiths, for example, and I'll just quickly see, have they got anything new that's appeared today? for sale. Maybe suddenly it says half price toys. I don't know. Like this is you really got to be on top of all of this. This is this is the difference that making like five grand profit or fifteen grand profit or twenty grand profit. You know, yes it's more work and you're like it's almost regimental, but it's you know for a lot of you that that is a valuable enough like return over Q4 to be doing this. And it's it you have it's all to do with discipline. Like I've always been. I've been looking into things, and everything in life is literally to do with discipline. So the more disciplined you are in everything, the more successful you are in everything. And the least, and obviously, everyone like decides, "Oh, sod it, I'm going to go get a pizza." But like, you know, if you go, "I want to go," like, it's almost like not your decision. It's like you are. It's not you controlling you. It's like the higher you controlling you. So it's like I don't care what Luke's got to say about it because I know I've got to go to the gym. Or I've got to get up at half five. You know, it's not about me. Like you got to override that base emotion. Anyway, not <laughs> going to get into that sort of stuff, but yeah. Um, so the next thing I'm going to go on. So we've got that Bybot Pro, or we've got the FBA Multi Tool. Awesome, and that is going to speed up your purchasing. You really. So this is going to already. 
I never had this last year. So what I used to do last year, and I'd say if you haven't got it, get it, download the Amazon Sellers app, okay? Um, the Amazon Sellers app is literally just an app on your phone, and you can keep track of your sales, uh, your shipments. Like I always like to, as well, go on to manage FBA shipments and see how many shipments are still waiting to be booked in. Because I can use that as a base, like a little bit of a base rate. So looking now, actually a lot of stuff booked in recently. So yeah, I've just sent off boxes today. Um, but a lot, I mean, that's I've got like a couple of boxes that aren't booked, like aren't in stock. They're on the way to the fulfillment center or whatever. But I want to be having, like, I want 10 boxes that are in transit and not booked in because I know that I'm going to have fresh stock coming through all the time. And then if I see it's like, this is low, you know, Oh crap, I haven't got many fresh boxes. Yes, I might have had like five or six booking today, but I need to get more out because you need to keep, everything needs to be like oiled, you know? You've got any like breaks in the system anywhere, that is where you lose money. Uh, and it, yeah, it is a lot of work, but it's, you know, it's if you're going to do any work at all on your Amazon business, do it over Q4 because you can go from making, you know, you can make, you can make as much as you want. Uh, yeah, obviously it's capital dependent, but you can override the capital dependency by putting in all this extra time and keeping tabs of all the different layers of the business that you're actually like doing, you know, if you can get one pound, if I can get a pound in a million times in and out over a month, I'm so far, like I can get, I can order something now, get it in five minutes and then I can get it somehow to the, I can drive it to the fulfillment center across the road or something. It books in 20 minutes. Like, imagine you can, you know, for example, yeah? Like, and then, and it sells within 10 seconds. And then I can get paid faster payment. And it's in, I have it in my bank by like within two hours, you know? If you can get a pound in, in and out a million times, you've made a million, you've done a million pound of sales just off one pound. So your money, your cash flow, money going in and out by the end of that month is huge, but you're actually still working off that original pound. So you don't have to have a lot of cash flow to really make a lot out of it because you're getting it back so much faster. It's, you're like, wow, how am I getting all this money back? Because my, you know, I don't get, but that is where it is. It's sort of snowballs. You've really got to stay on top of all these little layers. And if you're going to do it anytime in Q4, you do it. So anytime in the year, you do it to Q4. And then you can relax the rest of the year. You can automate it, not relax, but <laughs> you can just do the opposite. Start using that profit to automate Amazon. This is this is so. This is what I'm going to do. Use a lot of that profit to then automate Amazon. Bring down your expenses because you can, for example, pay for some services upfront for a discount at the beginning of the year. So you, all of your monthly outgoings are like as l nothing because you paid it all upfront with the profits of Q4. And then every all the money you're making is like almost all profit because you've got nothing to pay out because you've cleaned that up. So you, the amount of work you would need to do is less because you don't have to make a minimum yes you might have to make a salary or something but you know you don't have like bank loans you pay back because you've made so much over q4 that you don't need a bank loan anymore so you've made that interest up and then you can pay for fba wizard up front and that means in february comes well there's no fba wizard fee all the, you know your fee is paid for and, and then basically you are having no expenses for the whole year and then you could have an even more amazing Q4 next year because you literally don't pay anything per month. So instead of having like six or seven hundred pounds of expenses for all these systems, it's like a hundred pounds for the bare basics, like boxes, you know, you can't pay out front for that. So like you're then making an extra six or seven hundred pounds profit per month over Q4 next year by, by nothing new. Like, you know, I know I'm sort of rambling, but I'm just trying to like... <coughs> I don't know, I just feel like sometimes this information isn't obvious to people and I just feel like I need to open eyes or something. I don't know. I mean, you're probably thinking, what the hell is this guy chatting? But, okay. Anyway, let's move on to the next piece of software. Otherwise, this would be about a four-hour video. So the next... All right, we've done that. The next thing we're going to go is you would probably need a repricer. Now, you might be asking, what is a repricer? Well, Amazon have their own repricer. Why can't I use that? Now, I use BQL. The only reason I'm going to talk about BQL is because I use it. That is it. You're only going to be using this one. You price the center. You don't want any of these. Um, you can start a 14-day free trial. It is a little bit confusing to start with when you've got to create a, a rule. Um, but you can... I'll just say, when you do go to the rules, just take it slow. 
take a couple of hours, you know, one or two hours to read all the, the setting. I'd create a new rule, that's what I would do, or I would use the one that they use but change it a like little bit so that you stuff like you don't compete with Amazon or you don't compete, your prices are higher if the cheapest is merchant fulfilled, little things like this. Um, but I would say just basically make sure that you re refresh your prices to the max. So you set your minimum price and your maximum price. Now, this is what, so this is what I'll explain. On Amazon, a free repricer, unless they've changed it, you go onto it, you say that I've got, I got a product for 9.99, I wanna set it for 21.99, but actually I, I don't mind selling it for 19.99 if the price goes down. Yeah, so you start selling at twenty one ninety nine, but you say the minimum is nineteen ninety nine on the Amazon repricer, and you say max is twenty two ninety nine. Now, by putting your max in on the Amazon, it's never going to go up to twenty one two ninety nine. Um, it just doesn't do that. It will all it would do is if someone else lowers their price, it will lower the price down to your lowest price, so the nineteen ninety nine. But once it's at the nineteen ninety nine, there's nothing in the system to refresh the price. Literally. It is what I'm trying to explain. Refresh the price, um, so it will. Your stock will stay at 19.99 unless you go in manually and just and upgrade the price to like 22 or something. Now, why is that an issue? Why is that matter? It basically means you'll never sell that pro product for 21.99 again while you've got stock because it's fit, stuck at 19.99. Now, on one of these reprices, you refresh your price every day. You can choose a time. I do it at about four o'clock in the morning when there's basically never going to be any not really any sales. Um, I do it at four o'clock in the morning and it refreshes all my prices to my max price. Now you're thinking, why would you want to do that? That means you're not going to be in the buy box. Well, no, I won't. But one, I'm not worried about being in the buy box at four o'clock in the morning, you know, because most of my sales will come through the day or the evening, yeah? Um, but what happens then is everybody else that also has this software also does the same thing. So say that I'm selling a grocery product and there's only five of us on there. Now I'm pretty sure people that are been doing this long enough will use a repricer. Most of them do. Not everybody, of course, but most people that you know reasonably done a long time. And groceries obviously isn't an automatic on gating, so you've got to get on gating and stuff. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna say that most of these, if not all, are on a repricer. And now obviously you can check if you want it and see if it go or everyone's prices refresh and stuff, but I don't. Um, and that means, I say that all of our prices refresh to twenty one ninety nine overnight. Well, guess what? Now, the cheapest person is twenty one ninety nine, not nineteen ninety nine, because we've all reset our prices. So the buy box is now raised back to a sustainable, so it goes up and down, it yo-yos over the day. And over the day, because my repricer goes down to nineteen ninety nine, someone else's repricer might Go to 2049, it goes down. Well, guess what? Mine will then go down to match because that's what my repricer does, all the way down to 1999. And obviously, by the end of the day, it could be 1999. Like, and then the next day, it refreshes. But by doing that, on every item you have, when you make a sale at, say, like someone wants to buy something, okay, they, well, they buy it before work. Okay, great. Well, actually, now I've made a sale at 2199 or uh, twenty one forty nine or whatever point the prices slowly drip down to, and I'd say obviously later in the day, uh, the lower the price would be because obviously over the day the price will be prices so does everyone else's. So I can sell an item for you know say on my my lowest this way so I can start making money. I got a good item fifty quid it sells for. Well actually I want to raise it to fifty nine ninety nine in the morning, and then <coughs> what happens? At 7.30 in the morning, someone buys it for 59.99, I've made six pound more profit. Okay, well, B kills only 19, 19, 24 dollars or something, 22 dollars a month. Well, I only need to do a couple of them and I basically pay for itself. And then I might actually make some profit. If all my products do that, I make a couple of, you know, I make a one or two quid here and there. Well, I don't need to do too many of them before it starts making me money. You see? And that way, it, it, you just you just type in your price. You just type in your min, your max on each item. So yes, you've got to do a little bit of a lot, little bit of work. <coughs> it looks like this. You just put well, it automatically like syncs with your account, so um, it's not too bad. It would it would literally look like this. You could set your min and max. These are this are the rules. 
you have to go over it a bit and read it. It's a little bit more complex than just the standard thing. And yeah, you you just crack on. And and once you've set your prices and that, you just leave it. And I do this across Europe as well. So I actually pay like £55 a month and it's all Europe. So then I can go onto the European website. So everyone's like, how much do I sell in Europe? How much percentage do I increase my... How much percentage do I increase my like um, European um, products? Well, I don't. I go into my repricer. I not every item is just ranked the same. So some items are non-existent, for example, or that awful or rank. So I go over the items that are booked in, the new, the fresh items. I will then find out what they are in euros. So I just do a conversion of. I normally use a one point one five conversion. One pounds times one point one five is is euro price. It's not correct but give or take a rough the rough value of what the euro value would be of the item um, I then type it I type in my min my max it shows me the, the fees and I just you know if, if I can see this item selling 50 a month for example I'll take 30% ROI on that now if you're repricing if you're setting your Amazon Europe to 45% 35% 45% above you know, above the above your UK prices. Well, guess what? You're not making any sales on those fifty. So I can now make thirty percent ROI, but I can be fifty a month. So I've now like opened up a completely new market. So instead of buying like uh, fifty for the UK, let's say I can buy a hundred because now Germany I can sell fifty there for thirty percent ROI and turn that in and turn that through and turn that through and you know. Imagine over Christmas, like instead of just having like eighty-five grand in one country, you can do eighty-five grand in all the countries. Now, yes, don't do that because there's VAT implications. If you go with thirty thousand euros in France, it's okay up to about a hundred thousand euros in Germany, in Spain, and Italy, and all that sort of thing. But be careful of France because then you got to start registering for VAT and doing all this fun, funky stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah, if you get close to within twelve months, thirty grand on France, just like deactivate France or something. I know I'll rush that, but I'm not going to give financial advice or anything. I'm just sort of giving you a rough un understanding of that. But yeah, and, and so now you understand why I use a repricer. And let's have a look how much price costs. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, $25. So what's that? Uh, I don't know. £21. Okay, we put. Let's say it's 21 quid. So we've got a repricer at 21 quid. Now you can get the European and all that, but. I'm still wondering, is it worth me having Europe? Because for the cost, is it really make? Am I making money on those? Come, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say. Am I making money on those? Like I'm spending ten pound. Yeah, okay, it's not much, but is it really making me that much more profit? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep it for Q4 because sales obviously increase, and to make up at least ten pounds is probably going to happen, but. After in Q1, I'm not sure. Now I just get this one, and it says listings available thousand. If you have more, you deact. You click the de. You basically just click this little thing. I don't know, this little button to say stop a listing. If you say that you've run out of stock, you just go through and you turn them off, and then you can turn on the new ones. So you can sort of cycle through. Um, so you shouldn't ever have to go up to this one. Um, possibly over Q4 you might need it, but um, I don't know. At the moment, I'm sort of just about to able to maintain that um yeah you just gotta trial it most people for beginners definitely i'm gonna go over that so that's awesome now well okay it's great to have that and that analyzing but we want to actually source some products don't we um what's the best way to do it now if you haven't purchased any products before and you haven't any got anything to start with but over, over Q4, a lot of deals go in and out of deals, and they're the same deal. So, three for two at Argos. Now, the next month, there might be another three for two for Argos. So, you want to always make sure that you are checking your previous purchases to see if you can get the deals again. So, that is one free way to get deals. Now, I look over, I still look over the last year of sales, sorry, of purchases, and I even, I even think, nah, I've looked over everything. And I still just go, no, come on, look, look at every item I bought. Yes, it's, it's tedious, but again, it depends on how much you want to put into it to get out of it over Christmas, over Q4. It's up, it, you know, 
for me, I'm just going to try to hit it as hard as I can. Yeah, and as much as I can. And it's probably more that I could do in all areas, but, you know, I'm just trying to get everything already prepared as much as I can. So that everything's as fast as I can. I can do everything as fast as I can over Q4. Even down to where I'm laying out things in, like, my flat. Um, like, will I have a dip? Will I convert one of the spare rooms into a dedicated prep area to get it in and out or am I gonna like hybrid it so I'm just gonna use like I've got a decent sized like kitchen diner area I guess you can call it which is, doesn't have anything in but the kitchen so like the whole diner area is like empty got my desk and I basically use that as the where I do everything uh, and literally just use the kitchen on the side but it's just the biggest room but then do I you know am I gonna then so it's all these little things, but each thing can speed up time. Like you, I could have everything laid out specifically. I could have it really, really like declutter everything so that everything is just easier to store, move around. You know, it, I know it's, you might think it's not stupid, but like, do I just like clear out a lot of crap in, in flat um, so that I can move around freely? I can stack more boxes up. I can do this. I can do that. You know. Um, just little things, just little things. Like, do I have like, do I like buy three, you know, plentiful worth of like supplies, for example, or do I order them as in, as I go? Do I have backups for everything, um, that sort of thing? So, for sourcing, anyway, for sourcing, FBA Wizard. Now, I use FBA Wizard, and a lot of people, it, you know, will say, but I've done all these millions of scans and I can't find anything. Well, now I say a lot of people, um, I feel, have their settings. So I'll show you my settings. This is really generic. I use FBA Wizard as a very generic search. I've done like, I got a video on 10 ways to source, did about one or two months ago. Goes through all this, but for newbies, I literally, even now, after two years, I keep it, look how cool, of, like, just nothingness the, these searches are. Like, Argos, Toys, Wilco's, hit and miss with Wilco's, Very, uh, Toy Shop, or what, the Insane of Smith, John Lewis, how, like, you know, and you can keep going through, 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 like, there's a big list here, obviously, you can't, I, I do cycle through, I don't do all of these every time, the same, I sort of, like, start up here on A, work my way down, then once they're all done, I'll go through and delete, and then I start again and work my way to the end, sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're not, I do minimum 22% ROI, and I'm thinking, what? 22% and I put minimum profit four, but sometimes I just do one. It depends on what top products. Um, and you know, if it's three for two, I normally put, you just put 33% discount because it doesn't register it's three for two sometimes. So you've got to put the discount so you can see, so the system knows that you want to reduce each item by the difference and stuff like that. Um, and then you start scan and literally just start these scans like this and then I'll do that each night or after every after it's done. So once all of these are done, I usually do half at a time. So if, if I've done five or six scans of done, I'll do them. And I'll come back to look at the other half. Then I'll delete everything and I'll start fresh. Like, like the discipline of doing this every time it's complete and making sure you add more. Because you might only find one or two items on, in the hamper. I might find one item on Berry, one on Wilco's, and nothing on the rest. And okay, fine, next, move on. What's after the work, you know? Um, and it's just about like the rep, the discipline of like going in, starting again, starting again, doing it again. Because you might only find one or two items, but then you might find like three items and you think, oh, okay. And then you might be able to buy those same items again in a couple of weeks. So actually, you're not just getting those, you know, you're not just getting one or two items, you're getting like, like it's, it's you know, it's, you're building up some sort of history, something you can go back to. And a lot of stuff that I just go back over and buy are from these odd scans, you know, it could be a beauty item from Superdrug. Now they cycle through half price, then it'll be full price, and it'll be half price, and it'll be full price. Well, I would have found that one item on Superdrug here, and I think, oh, only one item. But now it's one, plus the other one I found last week, plus the other, like, you know, over a year, you've got 50, 60, you've got, you start building up all these items that um, you can go and buy again, uh, in theory, and it's just by me picking out that one, that one, and sometimes it, the ROI might be you're making three quid, but spending ten. 
and you're thinking only three pounds. That's what people think. They look at it and think only three quid, only two fifty. Oh, great, two fifty. It's not about what it is. It's not about the numbers. It's not about that. It's okay, yeah, but two fifty times billion. Like, but people are looking at the individual. They're seeing one pound profit. Now, I, I normally go minimum one pound profit, but sometimes I'll go a bit higher in case it drops down a bit. So it's always minimum of a pound. And actually, sometimes on some stuff like toasters, I'll just take five pound profit. Um, but if I, if I can see someone selling loads, uh, and I've got some spare cash, like I've got my cash flow is good, uh, I'd rather instead of keeping it sat there, I'll change this to like 15% or something. Um, and at five, you know, four pound fifty, and we're looking for a, a like reasonably high, higher price electricals here, like toasters that could cost me fifty quid, and it might come up with a profit of five pound eighty. Well, I'll do that. I, I think I bought fifteen toasters the other day. You know, we get them in and out quick, make a little bit, of, little bit of cash. It's not, it's not um, anything amazing, but I had the cash in the bank, so. You know, you, you, some people are I think, only taking five pounds and it has to be 30, 40 percent ROI. And that's where you're going wrong, you know, because, yeah, you, you'll get some of that or that. But you need to. It's all about the product mix, as they call it in, <laughs> in business. Um, all of these little elements that go together to make something. It's not about one way rules all or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll mix, I'll mix everything up and overall. Then when you see the month picture, you might have an average ROI of 38% and you made X amount of money. Now it's irrelevant where it's come from because it's now all together in one for that month. Yeah, but by you, no, don't want that, don't want that. Now your ROI is you know, like 50%, but I've done three sales. Okay, great, That's what's the point in that? You know, you get what I'm trying to say? So you need to play with this. Now obviously don't keep pushing down, I'm going to take 40p, 50, you know, like, and it cost me like £4, 55p, okay, you don't you know, go stupid, because usually you find like, the amount that you've got to do at that rate is not worth your time almost, you're getting like, you get blown in the way, you get like a pound an hour, because you're making so little on each sale, and the time it takes you to get it and do it, you know, sell it, get money back, it's just not worth it, so you have to have reasonable, like, you have to be reasonable, but also you can play with it. Um, and definitely when it's a toy sales and stuff, all the toy sales come on, you can just go on Argos and, and you know, Smiths and that, and you, you can just pick up, it's pretty, relatively easy to find some good deals. And it's only because Christmas is, there's so many deals that you don't have to really try too hard to find them. And by just doing this sort of thing, you might find, actually over Christmas it gets even better and better. And you actually, yeah, it's like 100 to 80 pound a month or whatever it is on this. I don't know how much that costs. cost. Um, I'm just, oh, I don't know. Um, we'll have a quick patch to have some look. Um, but you actually find that you deals yourself fall onto your lap after a while. Uh, is it gonna log me in by clicking this or not? Right. You know, and you just find all these deals, and for the price it is. For what I'm saying, it's it's worth it. Um, all right, is there some? Hello, would you like to show me the price? Oh, did it have it? All right, you can get it for free for ten days. Ninety-seven a month. Okay. I mean, I pay like seventy something, but because I obviously had it for ages. And I did try tactical arbitrage, and you can find better deals on tactical arbitrage, but it's a little bit more time. It takes me more time. With this, I just run the scans. When they're done, I just go over it. Like it looks like this. You can watch the video here, and I just go over it. It doesn't take me that long to look over the stuff, and then I rinse and repeat and leave it. With tactical arbitrage, it is quite like I feel like you got to spend more time setting it all up, and that's because this is really this is not. I'm not using this to find the most amazing product ever. I'm using this as you know, just find those items basically. Just find those items that I can just put in, tick over, tick over, tick over. Um, like that all adds up and the product mix, whatever stuff I'm just spewing, um, <laughs> all adds up to something at the end, and it doesn't really matter where it comes from. Uh, so, what we're actually going to talk about now, um, I don't actually know where it is, I'm sure I had it, but we're gonna, it's BVA, so bookable VA. And 
And now I've had Bookable for VA for a long time, and it basically gives provides you leads every day. So about 10 leads um, every day, and it can be, I don't know if it's got a little picture or not, no. But basically it provides you sourcing deals, yeah? Just, you know, like handed to you, you can buy it here, 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 here. Yes, be careful because some items, you've got to do your own due diligence. That's why I like the Buybot Pro or FBM Auto Tool or that also complement this because you some items might be private label. For example, you don't know it looks like it's a good product, but actually it's someone that's actually made that and selling it on a website, you know. Uh, so you've got to be careful. Don't just go and buy everything. But also, like, this is now another element we can use, you know. And also, these items can also, like, within, you know, this time next month, could also be on deal again. So you've got each of these sourcing techniques are complemented by you can go back over the information um, and use this data again to make more sales in the future. Uh, and it just gives you 10 leads a day. And I don't always buy leads. Like, I might buy 100 quid on this day and not even no, nothing for a couple of days and I might spend £50 here and then I might leave it a couple of days then I might spend £500 but over Q4 <coughs> and what they do through all the, throughout the year as well that you'll get an email sometimes it's like Sundays it'll say fabulous Fridays they call them um, or like sumptuous Sundays I guess you could call it and uh, if there's a 3 for 2 at Argos or if there's a t Tesco's bar and get on free or whatever you then get bonus sheets and yes, it is shared amongst about 20 people, so don't go crazy on your purchases. Don't think, oh my god, you know. And then when people say, but isn't it saturated? Well, so, you, t you know, isn't Amazon saturated as a whole because everyone knows everything that they can buy? Like, for example, if this VA is finding it behind the scenes, well, isn't my VA finding it and that guy's VA and the other 3,000 people doing online arbitrage's VAs? So, like, every item that you can find is found by everyone that can find them. That's why normally the products are out of stock if they're good because you, the 20 people on the sheet, plus another 2,000 online arbitrages have tried to buy it, but now it's out of stock. You know, so it, it in 20 is probably like the least of your worries. Like 20 is nothing. Like if only 20 people were looking at every deal in the UK, like that would be amazing. But it's hundreds, there must be at least, like, realistically, there must be hundreds of people within a few days looking at that deal doing all an arbitrage that's how i feel um so you know don't even think like worry just don't buy loads if you're that worried you think it's gonna be saturated just buy four to six of this four to six of this four to six of this because whatever happens you know you're not stuck or whatever with loads of one thing and you know yes the price usually goes down when it's on a sheet or on a deal but it does anyway because everyone's buying it so either you get it in asap like get it in now so that's why i was talking about have it all streamlined get everything in and out as fast as possible you you if you get it delivered tomorrow or you go and pick it up as the click and that's what argos click and collect or something you know um you can get it in tomorrow you can prep it tonight and ship it tomorrow ship it prep it in the morning ship it in the afternoon and then you can get it in before a lot of other people have because they might be using a prep center for example it takes a little bit longer and you can sell out before that even happens or you sell half and then you just wait and then you wait for all these people at the beginning to sell out and over Q4 you'll sell the rest yeah so there's techniques and another technique just while I thought about it you might go on all of these and be like oh it's out of stock it's out of stock but how about collection yeah like a lot of places you can go and collect so what I used to do on like three for twos and buy and get on threes I would basically look at the route I look at all the different sort of I say Argos is around the area and I'd literally do an evening out so you can do it after hours you can because everything closes at eight I would literally uh, get, like arrange f smiths as well so there's a couple of smiths around the area a couple of Argos and I'd go drive to each store <coughs> and I would um get that whatever they had there from there there from there there from there there from there and if you find that with Argos it moves just as out of stock well, what you got to do is jump in your car for two hours, and you just got like loads of you got four hundred quid, not just four hundred quid of, of RA or, or whatever OA. But actually, that's probably more. It's more of a gem because it's out of stock, so a lot of people aren't bought, be able, aren't able to get it. But because you're sort of going beyond the call of duty, it doesn't really matter. It's Q four, you don't have to do it all year. 
So, and this is where this comes in as well. And also, you know, FBA Wizard, and you can do the same thing. You can just click and collect. You know, it just, like I said, it depends on how much you want to do or not do. Um, and this is £99 a month. Now, obviously, you just get one. I have two. You don't need two. Like, you should, over Christmas, you should definitely, you know, if you're going to get it at any time in the year, you're getting it at Christmas. Yeah, this is what you get. Give it at Christmas. Okay, because um, you're easily making money up. You're making money up just by these bonus sheets that come out for three for twos. And this, you, you know, I, I get up at like four in the morning, five in the morning. I'm, you think I'm joking? Or I stay up late. And when these deals come live, the, the virtual assistants are updating these sheets like Google Drive sheets, like Excel. They're updating these sheets. Um, live so you're literally seeing these deals get entered as they're finding them and yes you can go on like argos and do it yourself but the but you can go through thousands of items and you know just take you forever and you might like miss the good ones and find the crap ones or whatever and uh, yeah you can just literally stay up all night and just wait for these deals to come in and then i used to do click and collect so i I'd, I'd, and also if you're going to do that do if it's like three for two you can't actually add like 40 items to cart and then it gives you the cheapest if you want three of that three of that three of that three of that that third item you think okay that's the third item for free that third item is for free well actually it just gives it will just give you the cheapest items as the free items so if you've got at 49.99 you get three you think okay i just make i just say 49.99 because it's three for two then you get some at 29.99 three for two but actually it won't like take one of that forty nine ninety nine and one of the twenty nine ninety nine. It will take all of the twenty nine ninety nines as your cheapest. So I do it in, in individual orders. So I'll buy three or six, and I check out. I know it's very annoying, tedious, but I check out. Then I go back on the website and I do it again, three to six. Check out because then I'm getting those ex explicit is that the right word? explicit items <coughs> as the three for two and not overall the cheapest products in the basket, uh, which drastically changed your margins basically. I found that last year, but you know you learn. <coughs> um I completely forgot what I was talking about. So yeah, get this. Um and obviously you, you will find really good deals over Christmas because all the websites to do it, like I said with FBA Wizard, you should just start finding deals. Book will VA will then hand you deals. And because the sales pick up between five and six ten percent, uh, so five and ten X, you might think, oh God, but what if it gets saturated? Well if it does it usually is quite fast paced, meaning like you're not sat around with it for ages because everybody there's so many more sales going through the system that you know where well, you might be waiting two weeks, three weeks, it might only be five days because like four sellers are sold out already, you know. Or if you want to take a little bit less money, but you know that you can make five times more on that profit over the same period, it's even though you might only be taking 25% ROI. You might only make, say, on a, say it's 100 quid, you're only making 25%, so you're making 25 quid. You're like, oh, only 25 quid. But then for that 25 quid, you can go and buy something else and get it in and out in like a day and a half instead of two weeks because it's now Q4. And then you make another 13 quid on that. So actually, over the same period where you could make 30, you'd be holding out for the 30, and you normally you'd wait, wait 10 days, say. But actually, if you just take the 25, you've actually now made like, the equivalent of like 80% ROI because you actually just sold it for less and then were able to buy something, get it in, sell that quicker, like like within 20 seconds because obviously it's Q4. Well, maybe not quite like that, but yeah. And then you can get it in, you know, and, and like 13 quid here, 10 pound, yes, it's not 20 pound profit, but 13 pound still 13 pound. And then with that 13 pound, you can buy something for 13 quid and make four pound profit. So you've actually made not just the 13, but you've made um, 17. Let's have a check that's actually right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so at least get this. So we're adding up these totals at the moment. What have we got so far? And it really isn't a huge amount more. $22.99 plus 21 plus 97 plus 99. Now we got $239.99. And realistically, I don't think there's anything else. Realistically, that is all you need to keep just for Q4. And, you know, if you... Maybe in November, you, you can't find enough deals, or you find Book All VA amazing, or you find something amazing. You can just spot, you know, you can sign up for another one. If you're making decent money and you think, well, £99 actually, I'll probably, I'll probably make at least £200 profit over 
November or December. Go ahead and get another one, sure. And then in January, you can always bring it back down again. Uh, like strip back your expenses, start afresh, re-evaluate everything, you know. <coughs> now, over Q4, because you can get your money in and out so much faster. Okay, we, we just come out of 239.99. Let's say you spend £10 on slush puppies, yeah, why not? Let's just add £10 a month for some slush puppies, yeah? Just like celebratory, like, while you're working, a little cheeky slush puppy or something, right? Um, that's yes, that's about 250 quid. Now, you'll you, you figure out what I'm trying to say in a sec. <laughs> now, over key four, your money is going in and out. Even if they have a thousand pounds, for example, the amount of money that goes in and out would look on your bank statement, it looks like the money going in is like eight, eight to ten grand. Yeah, it looks like you know, anything. Well, I haven't got how's eight, eight, ten grand gone because the same money is going in and out so much faster over the month, you know. Um, so you can spend. Like eight to ten grand from one thousand or from two thousand. Why does this matter? Well, the reason it matters is because I would now sign up for complete savings. Now, people are having issues signing up. If you just go to complete savings, they have a customer service thing here. And I think you could just try this or look right now and copy that. It says customer service at complete savings.co.uk. Email them, see if you can sign up. It is fifteen pounds a month. No people don't cost money. Yes, it is, but I'm about to show you why it's awesome. And it, you could probably sign up for more than one account. Now, the reason I say that is this earns you a minimum 10% cashback every time you shop online, just like you would with Top Cashback. Now, I don't understand why people use Top Cashback because it's awful, in my opinion. I used to use Top Cashback. It takes some half the time they cancel your commission, and it takes like up to six months to eat your money. Yeah, and yet once you start getting paid, because it's sort of like you've caught up with it, you can get decent returns every month. But you don't get ten percent; you get like two to five percent. Now look at these Argos Hotel and all. You know. But yeah, it has all the good places. Yeah, well, oh, good places. You know what I'm trying to say. And if it's not on here, try Top Cashback. Sure, you can make up to two hundred and fifty pounds a month in cash back and it's paid to you within within a month so if i buy something now i'll probably get it paid before a month's time now you might think that's a load of crap well you can see here um this month this is 09 you can see oh no it's just the last month yeah last month so it's 33.55 plus 40.87 plus 161 that's super juicy that's 235 quid we can uh, if you really want to see the rest oh this is all than this month. And I don't understand why sometimes they pay out more than 250. 250. Let's do this roughly. I got paid 300. Well, I, this one's actually pending. You can see it. But it's, they sometimes, yeah, I don't really understand the pending part. Sometimes it takes longer than others. Sometimes it, like you can see all these went at the same time. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's just weird. But you do get it. Uh, payment takes up to 30 days to appear in the bank statement. Well, it doesn't. It takes normally five. But it hasn't been sent yet. If it's a green tick, it means it's been sent, and then it will go. And you can see it will tell me all of the websites here. Not already, you know, you can see them. In the amount that I spent, all these purchases. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't abuse it. Don't go and spend a grand here, a grand here. Spend a couple hundred quid there, a couple hundred quid there, a couple hundred quid there, you know? Just like normal people would do. Like, yeah, you can, yeah, I, by spending like thousands a month, it looks suspicious, but I've been doing it. And it doesn't seem too bad, you know. Um, I did get banned from one of my accounts because I spent over a grand on like super drug, and it says this is suspicious. You're not allowed to use it for business. Um, but that's all they say. There's no, you can use it for business. Just don't, just be careful. And it, yes, it costs fifteen quid, but you can just see how much I've just got paid three hundred and fifteen quid. So I basically paid for this, all of these expenses I've just gone over. For all of these, Bybot Pro, FBA Multi Tool, whatever this one is, BQ, <laughs> this thing, and Bookle VA, and it's all for free. I basically, I can, you know, I've made an extra, how much did we say? 250? We got 50 quid to buy more slush puppies for next month. It's going to be such a good month for slush puppies in November. Because we've got, you know, all this coming out. Ah. Oh. You know, so it's almost paid for over Q4 because you're spending so much more on purchases. You actually have to get all this cool cash back.
So it's like your expenses are almost can almost be covered just by buying the bare minimum. And yes, it takes a little bit of time, but like to obviously get paid and stuff, and you've got to pay it out expenses out first before you get this. But overall, you're gonna be making some awesome money over Q4. You get all your exp and then you get it all paid for for free. You know? Where's the pinata? I mean, this is this is just. I mean, people don't. I see people still talking about top uh, top cashback, and I'm like, what do you mean top cashback? You can get two. It's like seven hundred and fifty quid just for over Q4. You can get, and then if you spend more than that, well, guess what? Let you into a secret. Go ahead and create another account. Oh, you know, I've this is my second account. I've had this account for six months, maybe more. Well, they're clearly very good at like. Checking that you know my IP address is the same one. No, they're not. They're very good at checking that the name's the same one. No, I just changed my name. Put L like my initial instead of Luke. I put L. Yeah, or I put my, my including my middle name on the sign up sheet. And all you've got to do is just add a different card. So you the card I'm adding the before was whatever. You just either you get another card or you use your credit card or you know whatever, um, or you get a new card for the whole thing. You add that card, you pay 15 quid, sure, but you're getting all this money extra, yeah? And they don't check. Like, as long as you... So I'm not I'm not doing certain things like claiming extra cash back. You can do, like, welcome reward, but you've got to send, like, your name and address and all that. And if they start... Basically, I'm just going to take the normal cash back. You can see claim 15 pounds. Basically, the 15 pound you pay, you can claim back. But I don't do that. Just because it's my second account. Now, if it's your first account, go ahead and do it. But you can do gift cards... Awesome, yeah. You can only do a hundred pound a month, but you can do gift cards. I mean, you're thinking, what? Like, just if just go on Argos and buy it for eighty quid, and you get a hundred pounds worth of vouchers, and you spent, you just made another twenty quid. Money coming out your ass. <laughs> oh, it's not signing me in anymore. Nah, that's just a crappy email. If you really want to send me junk? Go ahead and send me junk. I've got about ten, twenty thousand emails in that account, and I've got ninety two thousand. 256 emails in that account, so yeah, that's, uh, it shows you that. But this is, you know, it's just awesome. Uh, just be careful, don't abuse it, don't think, oh, I can get all this money, like, I'm going to create four accounts and make a grand. Yeah, you could, if you're smart enough, and you're doing enough turnover. Like, if you're doing 10 grand, like, I, yeah, you, over Q4, you could make a grand if you're smart and, and careful, and you, even if you put it on other people's names, like your partner. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying do that, I'm just saying... That someone could, I guess, but you know, um, there's something stopping them, and you can make, you could get a grand. Like, yeah, you're not going to mind not spend that year round. So I'm going to be get that year round, but Q4, go ahead. Like, like I, there are some websites it doesn't support some of the grocery retailers and stuff. So um, you might have to either not get any for them or um, whatever. But most of the toy retailers um, do are on here. So yeah, uh, see if there's anything else I miss. Oh yeah, Argos, no Amazon. So I'm going to show you what you should get in terms of prep. I get a variety of different things for prep. Um, so <clears throat> you can see here, I literally just use these labels. Now all you need to literally do is type in FBA labels on Amazon. Um, they look like this. Now the reason I do these this size is because you get more stickers on a page. It's 11 per row or column. Oh, for some reason, I have like a mental block on columns and rows. Um, and it, it gives you the most stickers. <coughs> so I used to have one that's bigger, but I thought, what's the point of having one sheet with less on? Just getting the most amount of stickers I can get. For, you know, uh, This is the ink cartridges I have. It's literally, you know, look how cheap it is. It's 15, it lasts me months, this one. It's just, I have a Samsung printer. I have one of these. Go on to it in a sec. Uh, this is some poly bags. So these are really large poly bags. These are like pretty giant. Um, because occasionally we have, you know, you get large stuff that needs doing. And yes, it's an outlay, but this this will last me a couple of months. This will last me, you know, this bag will last me all Q4 potentially. Um, I get these. These are just for the, the shipment boxes. Yeah. And pretty, you know, I normally buy, buy two at a time. So I always don't run out and stuff, but you can see the amount of um, money that they are. So yes, there are outlays, but they last a while. You're like, yes, they're going to pay up front, but 
you know this you don't have to buy it and that's this in the thousand you don't have to buy a thousand of them you can buy doing in uh, 200 I think you can buy 200 here. Uh, and get there, they're poly bags, yeah, and I say, you think, oh, but I, maybe I won't sell anything as poly bags, I say, I'd say sell anything that you can, don't, don't, it's Q4, like, if the one time you're going to spend money on, on things is Q4, in prep for, like, Q4, you get me, uh, rather than, like, in general, if you think, oh, no, I don't want it, it's too much faff to buy this, and then have to bag it, and then, like, fine, but if you're going to do it at any time, like, open up your options for, Q, for Q4, because it's the one time that it will reap the reward 10x, you know, don't hinder yourself by, no, I'm not doing that or that. Um, and I get, you know, you can see here, it's like multiple amounts and stuff. Um, and that's the tree. So you also have like sticker remover. Uh, I don't really use it often, don't need to. It's 151 sticker remover. Just search that in Google. But if there are stickers that you can't get off, you just dab that on, leave it for five minutes, and it peels off. And then you don't leave any marks or rip the box or that sort of thing. It is worth it um, because something like Argos, they have awful stuff sometimes. And, you know. um, and yeah, this is the printer I have. Um, 60 quid. And it's lasted me two years. Yeah, it's starting to play up now, but for 60, yeah. You can see when I purchased this. This is when I started Amazon. This is like my, that's get this party started set up you know uh, but I said you're wasting your money it's never gonna work um, okay well I'm still here let's see what happens <laughs> um, touch wood of course <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty cheap yeah okay you gotta spend 120 quid to get all this set up but that's not like a monthly cost is it it's one off fixed costs I normally don't even add that in I add that as like a separate thing but you know I'm trying to say um, and then for boxes I now I, my boxes are probably a bit more expensive than some people get, and they're probably smaller than what some people. What is this? <laughs> um, you know, it's it, the smaller, la, 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 but I rarely ever get distributed damage. Now, yes, I do get distributed damage, of course, because it goes from me through to UPS, who then have to load it on their van, do whatever they're doing with it check it in, then they've got to send it to Amazon. Um, uh, you know, you don't know how they're, how they're treating it and stuff. So, you, but, but out of all the boxes, these are the ones I don't ever, um, I don't get that much problems with. So it's basically 20, it's an extra large, but they're not that massive. They're, they're decent size. They're like quite, they're, rect, they're basically square. The reason I found I had rectangle ones that were like up to, it's like, eight, like 20, 24, 26 or something I had. But I found out the, the it, it was weak in the middle because it wasn't like the side. Obviously, the, the strength points are on the side, uh, the corners. Um, but when it's a rectangle, the middle's quite weak, so it can get bent and kink it on the box and stuff. So these are the best ones. Yeah, it's 37 quid, which is a pound 89 a box, but, or pound 90 a box. They're free, it comes with like next day delivery, all sorted, it's nice and easy, and everything gets there on piece pretty much. And they're easy to stack, they're really, really firm and strong, double walled. And yeah, just to search, there wasn't really a link as such, just to search this and it will come up. Global packaging, it's the people, and yeah, that's that's it. I think that's it for the for the video. Uh, you can obviously use prep centers, but for me, my opinion, starting off for new people, and definitely because it's Q4, if you want to pursue a for that in in January, go ahead. Reap as much as you can from Q4 now by doing all this extra work, and I promise you it will be worth it. You just could obviously be careful with things. Don't go buying everything that you see on sale thinking, you're going to be rich because... You know, you could get policy warnings for things because you're overlooking it. You're getting too excited and just, you know, buying anything that's on sale, thinking it's going to make you money. Uh, obviously, still got to do your, be do the oh, home said that word due diligence. Is that about right? You got to do it on purchases, uh, and obviously, Bible Pro and FBM Watch will help you on that. But still, it's not as easy as that sometimes. Um, it's software is only software. You know, there's still things you have to be considerate about. Um, 
if it looks a bit too good to be true, and it might be. Yes, there will be good deals and stuff um, over Christmas, but yeah, don't don't just don't get caught up in it as as Q4's going on and start buying everything and find that you have issues, or like you do loads of sales and make loads of money over Christmas, but then you have issues in January with like products being wrong um, and policy warnings or whatever. Because then, what's the point of having? Like I always say, would you want like a hundred pound, hundred thousand pound profit in a year, but then you get banned because you are selling everything um, second hand, this, that, and the other. You're not, you know, or thirty, you're making thirty grand for five years because you're prudent and like careful and spend a bit more time. You know what I'm trying to say. It's, everyone has their own perception on it, <coughs> but yeah. So just be careful on that front. But as long as you're following. The basic principles for everything. You're learning everything. Um, you've learned Amazon. You haven't just jumped in thinking I need to get in it now. Even if you are jumping into it now, just spend the next two weeks like watching all the videos that you can find on YouTube about Amazon FBA online arbitrage. Basically, everything you can find. Just I used to spend like five hours a night. I get home from work, so, and I'd watch like just keep typing in Amazon. FBA, Amazon, like retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, selling on Amazon, like anything. Like even those really old, like Amazon Fulfillment Center videos, to see what it's like inside. I literally just learn anything. I'd do it every single night for like a month, five, four hours, five hours. Literally, just, like lived and breathed the YouTube on, on it. it was just like, I was like, this is my ticket. You know, that, that's how I saw it. It was like, it was like the Holy Grail. So I was like, just watching as much as I could. And now I don't actually, well, I do watch stuff to, to check everything I'm doing is correct and all that. But I feel like now I'm like at a point where I'm, I'm now doing the, the videos. And there are things that I, the reason I'm starting doing all these videos is because I, I found there are things that people don't talk about or they overlook. Um, or they talk about it at some, like, you know, they might have talked about it a year ago, but they haven't really brought it back up. And there maybe something's changed uh, or something's slightly changed and stuff like that. Um, and I just feel like some things, you know, people ask these questions in the groups. So I'm thinking, God, like, there's really easy answers for all these questions. And so, you know, I'm going to end the video there. It's quite long, one hour and a half. But I feel like I've covered quite a lot and probably definitely some, like, golden tickets in there somewhere. <clears throat> um, you know, and that is it. Like, this is sort of like what the video is like for beginners, like my minimum investment for Q4 what I would, what I would, like, um, what's the word, like, suggest, or can, uh, my suggestion for you, basically, like, my advice, that's it, um, how I see it, and little gems and tips and tricks, and a bit more, like, background information about everything, rather than being completely, like, overwhelmed by, oh my god, it's Q4, like, I don't understand, what is it, how do I, do? you know, and uh, hopefully I've just provided a little bit of an overview for everything, Everything's in context a bit more, and you can now go ahead over the next sort of couple of weeks up to the dates I said, 19th, around the 19th, or you know, the 21st, and that is when sales start to rocket. You'll, you'll start, and November will be like just crazy for the whole month, and so will the beginning of December, uh, all the way up to about the 20th. Then it'll just disappear, and you'll do like eighty pound or hundred pound of sales over Christmas and that, but like over each day, like hundred quid here, eighty quid here. Just because no one's buying, you do a little bit, but yeah, uh, and nothing really starts until sort of payday week or the end of October. It does start picking up the full payday week, but yeah, as I said, all before. Anyway, leave it there. Hopefully, you had some awesome insight in this video. I had some fun doing it, um, and yeah, all these anyone that sort of has any questions, just comment below, smash a thumbs up as per usual. Hopefully, no one puts a thumbs down, but if you do. Tell me why. Maybe I just drone on too long because I know that is true. So, you know, can't harm me. You're responsible for that because I'm fully aware of that. But, um, yeah, anyway, hopefully you enjoy it. And I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.